That was awesome. Nick of time, man. Visitor center there. I pulled up with like 10 minutes before they close at like 4.20. They close at 4.30. I get in there and I meet a guy and I get right up there to the front and he meets with me for 15 minutes after, a little bit after they closed. Set me up with a backpacking spot. Told me how to get there. Um, gave me some advice and whatnot. But uh, it's a nice little five mile trail for tonight or maybe it's five miles round trip. Um, I, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. But I gotta drive down this road, get my stuff ready and do some backpacking tonight. Yes. Got about two more miles to go to where I turn off on this uh, smaller road. Ah, here it is. Pleasant Creek to the right. And that was right at eight miles. All right, there it is, a sign, Pleasant Creek Road. You said to go two miles down this road. Ooh, sweet, four wheeling. He said it's just mild there, it's nothing major. Two miles, okay, so check the odometer. A couple years ago when I was here, I was on a bunch of these old roads like this down in Moab. I mean, Moab's not a national park, it's just a cool area. <laughs> there are unmaintained trails, not trails, but roads like this. Some of them are pretty, pretty sketchy. Here, this Subaru was like brand spanking new. I bought it brand spanking new two years ago and drove it straight to Utah. <laughs> I'm back in these back roads. I'm like, you know what? I gotta remember, this is not a Jeep. <laughs> I don't have super high clearance, but I have like nine inches, which is pretty good. For a stock car so i hit some pretty sketchy roads like that a couple years ago and i'm not attempting those this year it was all new and i was excited my new toy but i've driven it a couple years now it's like yeah i kind of want to kind of want to take care of it so uh here's the road this one looks pretty tame Beautiful out here. Look at this. There was a sign back there that said Golden Throne Viewpoint 70 yards. This must be it. I don't know what the Golden Throne is. Is that the Golden Throne? back there somewhere, maybe I'm passing it. It's back to my buggy windshield. of that rock on top of that tree up there falling as I drive by it. <laughs> Stay up there, buddy.
here. Check this out. Wow, this is awesome. An old building, old homestead down here. fencing around it. This must be it. Must be it. There's a creek right there. He said it goes along a creek, the trail does. But that says uh, high four wheel drive clearance, road not maintained. So uh, he didn't mention that to me. So this must be where I stop. I'll check it out. Okay. Let's check it out. All right, let's start this hike. See my car right there. You might be able to hear that creek over there. This is about maybe two and a half, three miles to the very east end of a uh, edge of a, uh, this is uh, to the very east edge of Capital. This, this hike is to the very east edge of Capitol Reef National Park. I'm in Southern Utah. I've been to Southern Utah before. You've seen my videos from a couple years ago, but I haven't been to this particular area. So I'm here to check it out. As you can tell, the sun is about an hour from setting. This is a very long trail, so hopefully I can find a camp spot at some point pretty soon. But I'll tell you more in a little bit, so. The guy at the visitor's office said, uh, I pretty much follow this, this stream the entire way, so there's plenty of water. But I'm kind of freaked out about drinking the water here, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So I've been following this creek for about a half mile. I have looked, the trail's not marked at all. In fact, I don't even see a trail. <laughs> but it did say to follow the creek, so you can't really get lost. The creek is right here. Unless I should be over there somewhere. Looks like it curves left, so I guess I do probably have should be over there. Well, maybe I'm at the top of it over there. I'm gonna keep going this way. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't mind, but it's gonna be dark soon and uh, I hate bushwhacking trying to find a trail that doesn't exist. There's no way I'll get lost because he said to follow the stream the entire way. So. I was following footsteps up until about two minutes ago. I'm gonna get my bearings. Okay, first of all, check out where I'm hiking right now. Holy crap. Surrounded by these big canyon walls, it's amazing. I've kind of figured out that the trail it's just whatever you want to make it out to be. Uh, and great, I lost my instructions. Now I got to backtrack. Found my instructions. <laughs> they were in my pocket, other pocket. Anyway, uh, I figured out this trail is pretty much what, what make it what you what you can. You just follow the creek. Sometimes you're in the creek. Sometimes it opens up like this. When I was confused back there, I actually had to get in the creek. Not like 
soaked my feet, maybe a little bit, but not much. Just rock hopping. But then I actually read the uh, the trail pamphlet, and it said for the first couple miles, just kind of follow sandy beaches, <laughs> informal trails, it said. I've been on a few game trails. So it's a lot smoother right now. I'm just walking along this sandy edge here. But I've wasted some precious sunlight trying to figure that out, but... Just following this creek along that bend. I gotta find a campsite pretty soon. <laughs> well, I found the trail again. About a quarter mile back, I went up into this uh, level area just to find a place to set up camp, but I got pinched stumbled on the trail. Who knows, man? Down back down by the creek. I kind of don't want to set up camp by the creek. There are no storms in the forecast, but they warn you not to in case it does rain. I don't know, we'll see. I'll check this out, see if there's an outlet. If not, I'm gonna go back up top of that hill. <laughs> I found camp. Creek's right down there. Can't see it, but you can hear it. Surrounded by these giant canyon walls. There's kind of a trail right here, kind of, sort of. It's the only thing that looks remotely closer, close like a trail. I do see a few footprints on it. Anyway, I'm gonna camp set up right here. It's right by this trail. I don't care, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Not the best marked trail in the world, but I like it though, it's beautiful, man. I think it goes another half mile down that, or maybe another mile, mile and a half down that way. We'll see in the morning if I want to keep going or not. But uh, I don't know, it's beautiful. I guess up this tent, it's getting dark. Well, here we are. This is camp. Not a bad spot. Surrounded by these canyon walls. Got the creek right over there. Can't see it, but I can definitely hear it. Um. I don't know, you're not normally supposed to be right beside a trail, but honestly, it was getting dark. And I found this by accident. <laughs> if anybody finds this trail tonight or in the morning, all the power to them, man. I don't care. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, come over here and cook my dinner a little bit away from my tent, because there are, the guy said there's, there might be mountain lions or bears out here, but Nobody ever sees them. In fact, they're, ne they're never reported. But, you know, he said to be safe. So I'm going to not cook by my tent. I'm going to kind of go over here by the creek a little bit. <laughs> Here's the dinner table. <laughs> Tent's up there somewhere. You might be able to see it. I've never had this brand, uh, Peak Refuel. Never had this brand, but we're gonna have this uh, beef pasta marinara tonight. Looks pretty good. Expensive, but they say it's really good. But you know, these are about 14 bucks each. Like, wow, 14 bucks. But you know, go out to dinner. That's a cheap night. That's a cheap dinner if you go out. So I figure I'm out. I'm out, man. <laughs> out to eat. Okay, so I have this stewing in here. The freeze-dried meal, so it has to rehydrate in water for about 10 minutes. So, I forgot my headlamp. So I'm gonna go get it. The sun is already definitely set, but there's still plenty of light in this canyon here. I don't know if it's just the sunset is the residual light is reflecting off the canyon walls or what, but it's not that dark out. There's a few clouds in the sky. Hopefully we'll be able to see some stars tonight. My tent does not have a cover I can take off so I can see the stars, but It'll be cool to peek my head out and see some if I can. 
<laughs> well, as you can see, I'm in the tent. Uh, dinner was good. It's actually pretty tasty, not bad. But I was able to uh, get everything cleaned up and put my, uh, I brought a small bear box. Not because I needed a bear box out here, but there's really nowhere to hang food out here. Um, here, here there's just rocks and fields there where there's, there are some trees, but I don't know. I didn't know where I would hang if I did, if I did. So I, uh, I just brought a bear canister, you know, so whatever. It's a little heavy, but it works out here. <laughs> um, I know one thing, it's a lot cooler, or I don't know, it's a lot warmer here than it is, uh, than it was in Colorado. I mean, I was freezing in my truck last night. I mean, I had, you know, down, whatever, I was warm, but it was cold. Uh, it was like 30, I think it got up into like the upper 30s um, on that mountain. But inside my car, I had a thermometer, and it was like probably 43, 44. But right now, it is... You probably can't see this at all. Oh, yeah, I'll edit this out. Hold on a second. Can you see that? 62 degrees. 62 degrees. You have to trust me on that. <laughs> but it's not bad at all. It'll get cooler tonight. Probably in the 50s, I'm guessing. Low 50s, but uh, maybe high 40s. But we'll see. Ready for a good night. See you in the morning. morning. Good morning again. <laughs> All packed up. Down here at the kitchen <laughs> on my nifty uh, rock I found to sit on last night. Kind of see the sunrise starting to peek over a little bit. Look back, you can kind of see it on the rocks. Honestly, man, I slept really good last night. It was, uh, <clears throat> I have a little thermometer hanging in my tent. It only got down to like 58. That was in the middle of the night, so it was very comfortable with my 20 degree bag. In fact, I was a little too toasty. <laughs> but all in all, a good night, man. It was really quiet. Even though this this loud creek here, but I actually still put earplugs in. Even when the wind blows, man, I don't know. You think you hear something out there and it's really nothing, it's just the wind, the trees or whatever. I put earplugs in that way. If I don't hear anything, I don't wonder about anything. So. <laughs> I found that's what works best for me. But anyway, I'm not making a big production out of breakfast here. Here's my uh, bear canister. It's a small one. Well, kind of a normal, medium-sized one, I guess, that most people have. I am going to make some coffee, for sure. And I brought, like, uh, some Pop-Tarts or something I'm just going to munch on. And I'm going to probably head down the trail a little further, um, since there actually is a trail up here by where my tent was. I'm going to see how far down that goes. If it starts getting, like, wading through creeks again, I don't know. It's supposed to be a really cool spot, just right down here a little ways, two miles in. I, I gotta be about a mile and a half in at least. But uh, the, the, the canyon narrows, and there's like a kind of a cool feature down there. So I'm at least gonna try to check that out. So. So here's my uh, cook setup, well, for this little trip anyway. Um, little canister, 
I have a little titanium pot down there. I basically just store my uh, canister, my fuel in the pot. I keep this little chamois in here to dry things down, wipe things down, plus keeps things from rattling in here. A little lighter. Now I have this little BRS 3000T stove. It's very popular among backpacker, backpackers because it's very super light, lightweight. This thing weighs like, I don't know, it's like grams. It's not even an ounce, <laughs> I, I think. I don't know, it's super lightweight, but um, I don't know, it's, it works. It's tried and true, people use it, you know, but <clears throat> I just bought it here about a month ago just to try it out to see if it's really all the rage. I've been using a uh, MSR Pocket Rocket 2 for a couple of years. It's, it weighs a couple ounces, so it's, it's heavier than this, but it's really not heavy at all. <laughs> but I don't know, I, I kind of like, I think I'm spoiled with my Pocket Rocket. I like it a lot better. It's a little bigger. It has a bigger platform to put your pot on. The little arms here are bigger. But it's not like huge. It's not like you're carrying this giant weight around with you. It's really light still, like a couple ounces, I think. But um, plus, this thing's really flimsy. The little arms, once you disengage them, it's just like flop, flop, flop. I don't know. It's kind of a pain, but it works. Plus, when you have it on your canister down there, there's not much real estate to put your pot on. So you got to be really careful. It's kind of wobbly sometimes, but the pocket rocket's much better in that regard. But I don't know. I like it still, but I'll probably go back to my pocket rocket <laughs> after trying this a few times now. So. As far as coffee goes, uh, I like this little coffee filter stand system. You just kind of soak it right into your cup down there. Um, I got that on Amazon. Thought I'd try it out. I've had to use it a few times now and it's it's really cool. Plus it's easy cleanup. You can uh just pick the whole thing up and put it in your little trash can container. And there you're clean. Plus when you're finished with it. Kind of squeezes down on itself here, like that. I just put it back in the baggie with the filters. Good to go. Pop tarts and coffee. Cheers. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. The coffee. Okay, first of all, I brought this Yeti little, this little Yeti uh, lowball cup. Normally, I don't bring that on a backpacking trip because that thing is pretty heavy. <laughs> but most of this trip for me is car camping. I'm sleeping in my car, but I'm doing like little backpacking tri trips like this off and on. So for a little one nighter, just a couple miles down a trail, I'll definitely pack that in with me in my pack. If I were going for like a two or three night trip, I would not pack that with me. I'd drink out of my uh, my titanium pot that I cook in. But uh, it's just a simple breakfast today. Pop tarts, coffee. Unlike last night, I'm in no hurry this morning. My car is only a mile and a half back that way. I'm gonna go down the stream a little further, see where it ends up. Have about a liter and a half of water left, which is key. Normally, I would just filter water out of a stream like this, but I ain't drinking this water. There's like cattle, free roaming cattle all over this area around this park. And they have they have access to all the streams, creeks, everything. So, and the pamphlet said that um, there is E. coli in this water. They They find it in samples once in a while, so. I mean, I have the filters, you know, I can filter whatever, but if there's known cattle grazing in the waters that feed into these creeks <laughs> with my uh, immunosuppressants from my immunosuppressant drugs for my kidney transplant, I want to drink my own water. Thank you very much while I'm in this area, in this park anyway. <laughs> 
So I gotta pack a lot of water in. Per usual, but I'm used to that. Well, since I left camp coming from that way, I've been on this distinct trail. But man, I just rounded the corner. I mean, that's not even 100 yards from where I camped and I rounded the corner and saw this amazing little pocket here. I set my tent up right there. Or maybe over here. I mean, let's be real. Anywhere you camp down here is awesome. But <laughs> it seems like every time you go backpacking, you know, if you just disperse camping, camp anywhere, you find a place to camp. And then <laughs> inevitably the next morning you're around the corner or half mile down the road trail. You're like, shit, this would have been awesome. But... I was in a time crunch last night, man. That sun was setting. <laughs> See, sometimes you can't really tell. Does the trail cross over there? Or does it come up here? Luckily, I see footsteps. So it's either the trail or somebody else's mistake. <laughs> I'll do a 360 here. Look at this boulder field. This is awesome. Came from around that bend over there. Looks like the creek goes around that slot over there, so... Let's do it. So these little things... Little tiny cactus things or whatever they are. They're all over the place out here. Gotta watch where you step, man, because I have these uh, soft trail runners on. I actually had to use my emergency kit last night. <laughs> I was uh, walking down to the creek for dinner and I brushed my, I just swiped one of those. Damn needle went through my shoe and into my foot. It's like, ow! I pulled it out. I mean, it didn't get stuck. There was no splinter, but it hurt, man. <laughs> There's like a little lump. It hit like a little blood vessel. So I put some Neosporin on it. A little Band-Aid. Took that ouchie right away. Slept great last night. <laughs> So a few minutes ago, I was uh, on the same side of the creek, but way down there with that, kind of like right in there somewhere. I felt like I, I should have had to cross the creek, continue it to over that way. But I kind of looked up a little bit and over to this same side of the creek and I saw this path right here. So I didn't, so at first I didn't think I needed to go this way because there's a bunch of brush you had to go through, but. I went around the brush and lo and behold, there was a trail right there. So sometimes I found, look ahead a little ways to see if you can see a trail on either side of the creek. <laughs> and that can help you navigate too. Look, let's be honest, the stream is your navigation, but it's nice to actually be on a trail. <laughs> well, the trail kind of ended up there because I'm up against the canyon wall now. So you dip down into the stream area here. I kind of wish I wore my Gore-Tex waterproof uh, hiking boots, but oh well, it's not that bad. Just gotta like uh, find spots to cross. I'm guessing the trail's over there somewhere. Looks like I can maybe hop over this. Might be easier over here. Here, little jump there, maybe. Use this as a catapult. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> Get up here. I 
And there's no trail. <laughs> Maybe up here. Well, even if there's no trail, look, I see footsteps. I keep saying footsteps, footprints. Look at there. There's the trail. It was on this side. <laughs> but hey, still beautiful. trail just diminished into this little rock structure here. Kind of cool to scramble up that. Really awesome. I'm gonna go right down the creek bed there on the right and around that corner and see what's down there. There's a significant um, point on the map two miles in and I gotta be getting close. It said the, car the canyon narrows And there's like a kind of cool rock structure in the river. It's got to be right around that corner. I, I'm two miles in right now, easily. Wow. This is outstanding. There's that corner, that bend I went around just now. Looks like there's another one here going left. I'm about 1.2 miles from where I camped and the, view, the pamphlet says 2.1 miles into the trail you'll get to this narrow canyon with these uh, sandstone chute walls and stuff so this must be it. I'm going to go around this corner again see what's over there. I'll take you with me. How freaking awesome is this? Holy crap. Man. This, this national park is very long and narrow if you look on a map. Uh, this trail, this stream is in just one little section of it. It goes across, you know, one of the narrow strips across the whole park. But it's about... <laughs> three miles long I think two and a half three and by the time you go back you're gonna have about a five mile loop I got to be getting close to the end but this is the end for me because if I had more water I'd keep going I've only got one liter of water left and I got to go back two to two and a half miles so uh, I got to be smart protect my body my my uh, my new kidney but man this is amazing I really want to keep going. <laughs> Eventually this uh, goes to the park boundary and there's like a fence with private land. And that's where you know it's the end, but it's probably another half mile to a mile. I don't know, my GPS right now, I am 1.37 miles from where I camped. Now, I'm guessing I camped about a mile in. By the time I got to camp, my GPS said uh, 1.5 miles, but coming out to camp I was doing a lot of backtracking crossing I was not really lost but just trying to find a path here and there before I learned that there really is no path you just got to find them here and there so I don't know how far my camp was I'm guessing about a mile from the start sounds about right I've got about a mile not quite a mile and a half so I got almost two and a half miles back to the car I got one liter of water left so this is beautiful. This is the grand finale for me for this hike.
I'm gonna take a few pictures and uh, start heading back. I'm uh, on my way back, uh, not quite a half mile back yet, but I thought I'd show this kind of open area. Came through earlier, and look, a path. <laughs> my gosh, this is so pretty. Sun's peeking through the clouds. There's a trail. <laughs> Believe it or not, since I turned around, I've actually been following a, a pretty decent trail the entire time. A lot of which I was not on on the way out there. <laughs> but uh, I think coming back, you know where you've been. So you can kind of look at other areas where there might be a trail. But uh, so far, so good. But I'm sure it's going to change soon. Like right here, this trail, it looks like it seems to end here, but you see footprints crossing there and kind of going up that way. Well, I'm back to where I camped. Two and a half miles round trip so far. Well, from camp down there and back. So about a mile and a quarter, a little over a mile and a quarter each way. I don't know, going down there, it said 1.44, but coming back, I'm right at two and a half, so. Maybe in these canyons GPS is off a little bit, but really pretty out here, man. It's a beautiful morning. It's been a little overcast, which kept the temperature down. It's been perfect hiking, hiking weather. Low 60s, like 61, 62 tops. But the sun's out. It's starting to feel a little bit warm up now, but we'll see how far I got back to the car. I'm at 2.57 right now. So far this morning so uh, we'll figure it out when i get there that's the path I'm trying to see where it picks up over here though See a bunch of footsteps, so footprints over there. That's where I crossed last night. I'm gonna go down here, go back and cross over there, and back up that way. How gorgeous is this, man? Freaking awesome. <clears throat> a little under a liter left. I know I don't have far to go, maybe less than a mile, so uh. I can be pretty liberal with this now because I have a ton of water back in my car. Ah, fresh. That water, not fresh. <laughs> e. coli, bad. <laughs> yeah, I definitely lost the trail again. I crossed the creek, I think, at the wrong time. <laughs> I was like bushwhacking through all that. There was no trail at all. Watching your step. I hate going through undisturbed areas, but man, <clears throat> some of this trail is just hard to find. So if you do this trail, this Pleasant Creek Trail in Capitol Reef National Park, the first half mile to mile out of the trailhead is really, <clears throat> I mean, don't get too frustrated if you can't find the trail get about half mile to a mile in and there's more instances of a distinct trail <laughs> but there's like none in the beginning here it's kind of weird <laughs> i finally said screw it just start following the creek <laughs> i think there might be a trail up here I know I'm close to the car, and I know I'm on this side of the creek, so I'm going to hike up here for a second. The trail kind of split off here. I'm trying to decide which way to go. I walk down here. 
it's basically just covered here it goes back down to the creek and the brush so that's sketchy that's a no-go <laughs> So let's go back to the fork. Which was right here. Came from there. There's the fork. So don't go that way. I want to go up this hill. See how sketchy that gets. I mean, it looks like a path, right? Definitely didn't come this way. Oh wow, this house is up there. Huh, how about that? Well. I don't think this is it either. It's a big spillway here. I think I gotta get back to the creek and cross and go over there. It's an adventure, man. It's fun though. <laughs> so I'm back at the trailhead. Uh, made it back, I think. Coming back, I'm not sure how many miles it was because it was the same. This first half mile or three quarters of a mile of this trail, if you ever come out here and do this, just be prepared. The first half mile to three quarters of a mile to mile is you're on your own basically. I mean, there's no path, there's no trail. Um, once you get a little ways in, not quite a mile in, you start coming across resemblances of paths and then you'll lose them, but then you get them back. So just kind of be wary of that. You have no way of getting lost because you're following the creek the entire way. Worst case scenario, just walk in the creek. It's not deep, at least not today anyway, or walk the edges, you know. Don't mind getting your feet wet. Don't wear anything cotton. <laughs> Don't wear cotton socks. Wear merino wool socks with breathable shoes, like trail runners or even, gourd, you know, waterproof shoes are fine, but I don't recommend them because if water, there's a giant hole on top of all shoes that water can get in. <laughs> Once water gets in there, your waterproof shoes are not gonna dry out like at all, ever. Good trail runners, they'll, you can just get them soaked all the way through. They dry really fast. And your socks, your merino wool socks dry really fast, so. You won't get blisters either. But anyway, it was a fun, fun trail, man. Beyond the, uh, the logistics of the first half mile coming and going, once you get back a mile and beyond, it is the most beautiful freaking hike I, you've ever can imagine. I mean, I put it up here with Zion a couple years ago. I mean, you're not as high, the canyons aren't as tall, but it's so pretty out here. Uh, but yeah, it's, but coming back, man. <laughs> I got so lost coming back. I mean, lost. I was by the creek, I wasn't lost, but there was no trail. Man, I was bushwhacking. I was like crossing the creek back and forth. I finally said, screw it, I'm walking in the creek. But I uh, saw a couple deer, that was cool. I didn't get them on video because uh, my GoPro died. That's why I'm kind of delayed doing this outro. Um, I got everything all situated. I'm actually on my real camera now doing this outro video. But uh, anyway, I made it back. All in all, it's probably about For probably about five miles total four and a half five out and back and that's the part that I did you can keep going obviously but I didn't go to the very end of it but but I got back plenty of water I'm down and drinking a lot of Gatorade and water now I'm gonna drive back through the park here and uh, get back to the visitor center which is about 10 miles away and reassess and figure out if I want to do another hike here or not or go over to a different part of, the, of this part of the state. There's stuff all over the place. I might go to Escalante Grand, Stair Grand Staircase next or I might go back down to Bryce Canyon. It's about an hour or two away. So uh, decisions to be made, but I'm sure I'll film it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Please come to Capitol Reef National Park if, you ever, if you're ever in the area or, or make it a point to come here actually. You won't regret it. Thanks. Oh.